Well, we're back after a week of playoff football with a fantasy football podcast for you. So make sure you like, subscribe, tune in, enjoy the show. This new year, focus on what's truly important to you and let HelloFresh take care of dinner with fresh pre-portioned ingredients and recipes delivered to your door. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS16. In Foot Clan, we want to thank LinkedIn for supporting the show. These days, it can be hard to find and hire the right candidates for your small business. In fact, that's something that uh, we know a lot about, having been a part of uh, several uh, small businesses in the past and with this company. So hiring people, kind of a big deal. Finding the right person, it's a big deal. And LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to get the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. That's a lot of people. It's almost too many. Oh, no, but you not, got it. But it's not too many. It's not. Uh, you can focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience and use uh, screening questions to get your role in front of the most qualified candidates. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know? Every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash footballers. That's linkedin.com slash footballers to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, January 18th. The year is 2022, and the fantasy footballers are still producing podcasts. I'm sorry. More we'll, congratulations. We'll be here. Till the end. <laughs> <laughs> like an old-timey radio station? Yes. Counting it down? Oh, my goodness. Signing off. Like, a, a, did you watch that um, the Jennifer Lawrence movie? Yeah, the Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up? Mm -hmm. Sitting around the dinner? We're just yep. sitting around the dinner? Table. Yep. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hold hands. Oh. And that's why six-point scoring is better. <laughs> Signing off forever. <laughs> The last Sorry, thing you sad. hear, oh, that's a sad uh, thought, oh, is sad. us. <laughs> that's A. That's, I mean, it could be worse. Somebody somewhere has the uh, transistor turned uh, to the footballers before the asteroid hits. Brooks is here today, one of the few employees we still have <laughs> present in the studio. I'm back in. Welcome back, Andy. Thanks. It's nice to Thanks, see buddy. you again, like IRL. I, I agree. Did you guys see the game last night? <laughs> oh yes, Sun, Suns beat the Spurs. Yeah, Spur go Suns. Yeah. Suns beat the Spurs by like twenty. We're Book on to basketball. Booker scored forty-eight. <laughs> oh man, um, that was an embarrassment. <laughs> it was. I mean, the the Cardinals were. Oh man, my yeah. bracket is perfect though so far. You didn't pick the Cardinals, of course not. Uh, um, yeah, so my my bracket so far, I went through the weekend, got them all right. Yeah, wow. I mean the, the Kyler interception reminded me a lot of my days as a fantasy or as a flag football yep. quarterback. Like when the game got behind, like that was not a good time for me as a quarterback because then you got to make a play, mm -hmm. and boy, he made a play. Oh, yeah, he did. I've seen that before from Jameis Winston a few times. Um, and Carson Wentz. Fair. Yeah, and Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I mean, the, the nice thing. It's panic mode. The nice thing about panic last, in the end zone. <laughs> last night is uh, the Cardinals were not the only team to get embarrassed this weekend. In fact, several teams, the Patriots, uh, got smoked. The Eagles, the Steelers. Even though like the final score doesn't necessarily look like oh it was the whole game they got trounced. They did. We really had the the Bengals Raiders game was was excellent. Came down to the wire. Uh, had the whistle gate as I'm sure it's being called out there. Where was it? Should it have been a touchdown? Should it not have been a touchdown? Doesn't matter now. Bengal, the Bengals won. And then the Cowboys 49er game was, it was exciting at the end, but the game as a whole was Yeah, I mean, the Cowboys okay. stunk. I mean, they yeah. didn't, they, it is very nice to go to the refrain of like, 
one play shouldn't define the game. Like if you go there, right. you don't have to debate these little whistles or the referee. I mean, you just <laughs> But that last drive was hysterical. Which one? The the Dallas Cowboys last mm. drive where they're running they're and running down. They've got no time left. They make a honestly, stupid play call. A, a I didn't really think the play call was stupid. Oh, I think it's he insane. needed to slide earlier. Yes. One hundred percent. I blame the ref zero percent for, for the record. I have no responsibility yes. on that referee. I totally agree. I thought the Because I'm not the, from Dallas. <laughs> I think the play call was genius because if you throw the if somebody else is running the ball, then you have uh, then you have to get the ball to the center and stuff. It, like all of these things where the ball has to get moved. If the quarterback has it, he is in control. Now, unfortunately, Dak maybe didn't realize the protocols of well, the ref has to touch the ball. And I and I, I honestly don't blame him for not knowing that. That's a weird one that I've never even thought about. That the ref, well, the ref has to touch the ball. Of course, the ref has to touch the ball because it. Yes, to spot you, the ball. You, you don't get to spot yeah, your you own ball. You can't have a player spotting the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so it totally makes sense. He just, if he had slid five yards earlier, they would have one shot. And other than that, you're throwing what a fifty yard hail mary with percentage chance at nothing. Yeah, at less than one percent. Yeah, I I don't blame the ref as a man. Like I don't think that guy the did ref, something wrong. He was trying his, his best. But if that didn't happen with the ref where he runs in and plows into the back of Dak, they get that snap off on time. Sure, so but it was his fault even though it was not his but fault. But then it just would have been no, a penalty. How was he going to get in there? They didn't yeah. give him the ball. Yeah. They, they became an offensive line and blocked his way in. <laughs> Here's the thing. If he had spotted the ball on time, they just lose on the next play. But but what was the ref's plan? Because he, he was running, man. Smoked right Momental. in the back of Dak. Like, but, but it's like, what yeah. was he trying to do? He what thought, was like, he supposed to do? He had to go touch the ball. I would go between the guys. <laughs> <laughs> just call, he, call me crazy. One of our, I'd try to go around him. One of our writers, Matt DeSorbo, tweeted something appropriate, which is maybe this is why we had six playoff teams and not seven. Because of the blowouts this past weekend, which... It also shows that peaking at the right time is all that matters in, in, in football because the Cardinals and the Cowboys had these really strong starts to the year, and that wasn't necessarily the case for the Chiefs, who everyone doubted. And mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, at the end of the year, you, you end up just torching your opponent because you're playing well. And look, the Cardinals didn't resemble, not even – not even close to the team that they were the first half of the year. They're just on both sides of the ball. And, you know, only so much that can be blamed on DeAndre Hopkins being right. gone because Joe Burrow showed you what it's like to play a first playoff game, right? Oh, yeah. And, yep. and, and, and you know. It was interesting. I was trying to go through the teams of, like, who got, who got absolutely annihilated. The Cardinals. Watching that game, Kyler Murray was not ready to play in no, the playoffs. No. And it wasn't just the beginning of the game. I mean, you got to the second half where you should be settled in and he's still dumping a ball right into the ground where the receiver is wide open. You have the Patriots. There perhaps Mac Jones was was not ready for that situation. Jalen Hurts looked rough uh against the Buccaneers, which credit to those defenses cuz they it I messaged you guys during the game like do the Buccaneers have 15 players on defense? Like yeah. at all time, at no one was open, pretty much ever for for the Eagles, and it felt like the same thing for the Cardinals. Of what is this offensive scheme where Buccaneers wide wide receivers and Rams wide receivers they're running free, they're they're getting open no problem, but the other team's offense they're always covered, and that I mean that comes down to scheme to me. Yeah, go Suns. <laughs> Yeah, go Suns. Uh, the, two, the two questions that I have from the, the blowouts. One, was Jalen Hurts' performance Hertz's performance bad enough that they move on from him? Did, uh, that's not my – I don't think so. You don't think so? And, I don't think so And either. was the Cardinals' performance bad enough that they move on from Cliff? Po uh, it's that not, one's possible. The, he's not under contract, right? Yeah, he still is, I believe. I mean, it, all the talk on local radio today was like, does he get a, like a short extension? Uh, Please he, no. He was on a four-year, so he'll be lame duck if he doesn't get an extension. Correct. That that and that they don't generally let coaches do that. So if they if he's the coach next year, I bet you he signs an extension. And if he's not the coach next year, then hooray, maybe Kyler hits the ceiling. Yeah. Um, another fantasy football note from last night's game that I think was maybe 
the headline for listeners. And today we have the truth about quarterbacks on the show. The truth episodes are starting right now. We're going to be breaking down the finishes, the players, the reality of having them on your roster, their impact, moving forward, all that stuff. But it was Cam Akers. Cam Akers recovered. Holy crap. Recovered from an Achilles injury in five and a half months to play in the same season and to look better than Sony Michelle yeah. and to gain 95 total yards and have bursts and all of these things. So, you know, and, and and now you and on the other side you had JJ Watt return from a three to four month injury in 13 weeks. So our you know, Cam Akers independently as a discussion point. Sure. And then just like injuries in general, is it going to be player specific? Is it going to be situational where you got to get back for a playoff game? Like this is so impressive. Cam Akers was basically put out to pasture in Dynasty Leagues when the Achilles injury happened mm -hmm. and suddenly looks – like, how good is this Rams team with him? Yeah, he looked – Like, they it, could it, go to the Super Bowl, it, no problem. The the note of him looking better than Sony Michel is completely accurate and insane that <laughs> – because Sony Michel over the past month has looked great. Mm -hmm. He's looked like a, a really good running back, but Cam Akers – in a short sample, we'll see how he feels today. And those deep targets is, down the sideline. Yeah, line. we'll see how he's feeling. But he looks like an one of the running backs that could be an actual difference maker on a team. One of the things that was different. This is only coming out now, of course, after he's uh, there. He, of, of course, you know, after he's doing it on the field. But he never actually tore his Achilles. His, yeah, <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> but his Achilles surgery was done a little bit different than most Achilles surgeries. The way it was described is instead of like the frayed ends being reattached, they actually went down like closer to the base because it was r a really healthy tendon. And so they were able to like Interesting. do a, a kind of different procedure and uh, that allowed him to rehab quicker. And it worked. So, yeah, I mean, he, he was – I think he was – I remember when we first got our UDK rankings done last year, he was the player that was the scariest to me because wasn't he like my running back three? Yeah, he was, he was madly in love high. with his uh, ability in this offense. And it's just so nice to see him back and healthy. And any run, like a running back back from Achilles, yeah. maybe we won't be so scared next time. Yeah, and going into next year, he looks great. The team loves him. The team just wanted to give – they wanted to give the offense to him this year. That was the plan. So they got him in the playoffs. It'll be fun to watch. Um and we'll have some games next week that are hopefully a little bit closer. Yes. News and notes from around the league. At least Brooks is sad with us, right? Yeah. Do you watch your Cowboys? Yeah. Yeah, you blame the ref? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Texans fired uh, head coach David Coley. Uh, this, okay, I it, mean... This one is um, strange and not strange all at the same time. I, I completely agree. It, it It's bizarre that you would give this coach a multiple-year deal knowing what he was going to be up against, then him having some success uh, with backups to as his starters, uh, but then you moved on from him, and I think that the reason that they moved on from him is going to be that another coach uh, became available uh, after Flores was let go from Miami and all of the whispers of Watson wanting to play for Flores, Flores wanting to coach Watson. So that that seems like one of the most obvious outcomes that will happen. I Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but that's we seem very lined up for Flores to end up in Houston. Pete Carroll will be back next year for Seattle. Okay. Uh, the report from Ian Rappaport, Dolphins want to build around Tua rather than move on, um, which I, I think that's, you know, that's a tough one. <laughs> they yeah. had to make that decision about Brian Flores, too, apparently not getting along with him. And, um, you know, you, you're playing with fire in the draft anyway. Yeah, some Outside of the side of the first pick the, or two sometimes. The rumor um, and, you know, uh, things that were. Um, behind the scenes supposedly going yes. on was that the team was kind of pro Tua and Flores was not. He was much more on Team Watson. And so, th you know, there were there were all those deals. Like, the deal is done to trade Watson to the Dolphins. Right. It just, he has to, you know, uh, Watson 
needs to settle his court cases before the trade deadline. It didn't happen, and so, um, but that was being reported right before the trade deadline. Now, with Flores out, them building around Tua. Let me ask you a philosophical question as a team based on this Tua news, okay? Let's say Tua's ceiling is Derek Carr, right? Mm -hmm. Because that kind of feels like maybe that's what it is, right? Like, you get to sure. a Derek Carr-level quarterback, and you could go back in time as the Raiders at this stage of having Derek Carr. Mm. Do you, would you say that they made the right decision to stick with Derek Carr and get this Derek Carr for the last, whatever, eight years? Or should they have moved on because you're aiming for some place higher than what Derek Carr is or where Tua might be? I, I think you make the right decision to stick with someone in the Derek Carr tier. Uh, the You know, right now there's rumors of maybe Kirk Cousins will be available in trade. He's got one massive year left on his deal and the Vikings appear to be rebuilding. And, and that's kind of the same caliber to me of like, would you rather have a franchise that is good and can compete and can be a playoff contender every single year but probably won't win the Super Bowl? Or do you just keep tearing everything down until you can get the Super Bowl quarterback? And and in my world view, there's just not enough of those guaranteed Super Bowl worthy quarterbacks where I would just I want to build a competitive team, try to get there, um, rather than be a dumpster fire for a decade in hopes that one day you'll hit on the the great quarterback. Is that how you would would you apply that to Baker? No, Baker sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, you just mentioned it, Kirk Cousins. Uncertain if he'll be back. Um, we'll be talking about Kirk. He's I think he's a great quarterback. Um, he reminds me so much of the Stafford tier, where if he had the pieces around him, you can win a Super Bowl with him. I, I asked Mike this question. I've been talking a lot about how unless teams, you know, like the, the Carolina Panthers, the Denver Broncos, they're going to bring someone in, you know, of, of in a like just how Ryan Fitzpatrick came into the Washington football team in the last offseason. And I, I was saying unless a great quarterback comes in, I'm not changing my opinion of these wide receivers. Is Kirk a needle moving quarterback where he goes to Denver now? Hugely. Yeah, absolutely. Massively, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, this I was chuckling under my breath. Oh no! Just because the athletic. And this is again. This is not from the team, <sighs> right? But there's a report that says all signs point to Mason Rudolph being the Steelers' starting quarterback in 2022. Let me be very clear. <laughs> no sign should point to that. There <laughs> should be no sign. Every sign should point a different direction than at Mason Rudolph. I feel like there would be a lot of signs in Cleveland, in Baltimore, maybe Cincinnati that would point ah. to Mason Rudolph as the the best starter for your franchise. I have I have been very vehement that I don't believe that this team will go sign a free agent quarterback. It's just not in their makeup. But if it's Mason or doing that, now I think they'll draft one. I think they'll draft the first round quarterback. They'll go the Mac Jones route. I mean, it's it's tough. Of like what is, what is the actual makeup of the Steelers? Because they've had Big Ben for two decades. Like, do you just they? I look at them the way that I do the Packers organizationally, which is you know you you build from within almost all of the time. Um, they don't go out and make flashy free agent signings, right? Yeah, I, I, but, I, but I, they also hit on their their quarterbacks twice in a row. Yeah, and that's why the Packers drafted Jordan Love is because they're trying to build that they, way. They did trade for Favre. Wasn't Favre? Yeah, they traded uh, for Favre, but not in the... They traded for Favre when he was in nothing. Right. Uh, and they, they, they'll they do that. I mean, they sign, they, they sign free agents every year. I'm just saying that Favre wasn't the Kirk Cousins on the market for $40 million. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you'd love... I mean, we'd all love it. Deontay Johnson managers, Chase Claypool managers, Najee Harris managers, bring somebody competent. Bring yes. Teddy Bridgewater in. I mean, oh, I, I no. mean, compared to Mason Rudolph, that would be a dream. Compared to Big Ben, that'd be a dream. Maybe. Um, <sighs> you guys both reacted very I, poorly to that. No, that's not that's not an answer to anything. Get, just roll with Mason Rudolph at that point. Um, so a lot of question marks, and and with question marks, and you'll see it this off season on the show. With question mark comes opportunity for fantasy players, because mystery intrigue that leads to. Buy low opportunities, sell yes, high opportunities, all sorts of things. A lot of teams this offseason will acquire new quarterbacks. And you'll be able to paint the picture of a great 
outcome. But remember, remember Sam Darnold. Remember Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. Remember all the quarterbacks that were added to be the answer that aren't the answer as well. There are other outcomes than the rosy one. So there are opportunities to let players go. If you had traded high on DJ Moore on the promise of Sam Darnold or Jerry Judy, like Jerry Judy's value is never coming back probably to what it was this past offseason. Trade-wise yeah, in Dynasty. So you do have to pick your spots. Calvin Ridley uh, has not contacted members of the Falcons front office regarding any plans for next season. Um, NFL Network's Mike Garofalo believes the Falcons trading Ridley is a very strong possibility. I feel like that is just a statement, you know, based on very little. So it's just watch Yeah, mm -hmm. at this point, right? Yeah, I mean... Uh, you, Are you going out and trying to get him? You could kick the tires and see how cheap you can get him. You know, I, I, I would trade a, a... If I'm a good team and I have a back of the second, you know, I'm, I was... You know the the one of the last three picks in the second round because I got a good team. I, I would go offer a second rounder for him. Yes, I would immediately, but that would be immediately rejected. Would you? So you I, would, I, I think would you trade Jerry Judy for? Him? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's. I mean, that's a yeah. big deal. Well, Jerry Judy just hasn't hasn't done it, and both situations could obviously change. Jerry Judy could get a quarterback, but. Again, more often than not, you can't get a quarterback. If you have to bet whether the Broncos heal all their quarterback troubles or not, <laughs> yeah. you have to bet that they don't. Uh, can I go back in time and trade for Cam Akers? <laughs> uh, Baker Mayfield expected to be sidelined with surgery. He'll be that, back. That was all th the problem was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shoulder um. sprain for uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, who I believe – as a starter, is now thirty six and fifteen. I believe that is Jimmy Garoppolo's record. Part of in me, games that he's started. Part of me, and obviously right, you that know that be, a lot that of this, a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of what I'm going to say is 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 very hard for me because I'm a Cardinals fan. But I'm I find myself rooting for the 49ers to win a Super Bowl to win it all this year with Jimmy Garoppolo. You want the chaos? I no, want I'm, the I'm right. I'm right. It, That's yeah. the record. Thirty six and fifteen. I mean, if they won a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, what? they cannot possibly move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, right? It's funny because somebody – I don't know who tweeted it, but they brought up – you know, you got we've been talking about Jalen Hurts, right? Great fantasy quarterback, maybe mm -hmm. not a great NFL quarterback. And then they talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Bad fantasy quarterback, bad NFL quarterback. Wins all his games. Yeah, I don't I, – I've never thought that Jimmy Garoppolo was bad. Um I thought the it was it just it felt like Shanahan wanted Garoppolo gone. I mean, you you made the most aggressive move you could possibly make to replace Jimmy Garoppolo because you so you're telling everyone, well, the problem here is actually Jimmy Garoppolo. Our team is very good. We can win a, a Super Bowl if we just didn't have Jimmy Garoppolo. So this you, you're right, Jason. That this whole thing, even at this point. Him making it to the divisional round of the playoffs, it, it's it's pure chaos at this point of what happens for the 49ers quarterback situation. I think that I believe the storyline of they were very firm on Mac Jones for a very long time. They made the trade for Mac Jones. Sure. And then the, the world swirled around them. And you start to be convinced that maybe you're drafting the wrong guy. And the world loves Trey Lance. And then you start to love Trey Lance. And suddenly, like Kyle Shanahan, to his credit, has always been willing to play the best player based on the practice. He's right? also been willing to draft the wrong player. Yes. but He's I also been willing to draft favorite. the right player and then not play that player. <laughs> but, you know, you, Dante Pettis, it doesn't matter your draft capital. You're not playing on the practice field. Brandon Ayuk, the beginning of the year, you're not playing the way you should be on the practice field. You're not playing in the game. Um, and it seems like we got there with, with Trey Lance. And, you know, can they win with Trey Lance? I don't know. Yeah, I think that the risks are higher with Trey Lance on the field um, right now in his career, but he still has to be the future. You, He has to be. What I, what I want to ha have happen is the ultimate Kyle Shanahan flex move. I want them to win a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo and then cut him. <laughs> just just move on. Just not not even trade him. Right. No, no. Just just flex. Just be like, yeah, we want a Super Bowl. We don't need your services it's anymore. It's so crazy because the best parallel to this situation 
is the same team from years ago. Right. When Alex Smith was like leading a very good team and then they moved to Kaepernick and stayed with him. And like, you know, what do you do if you, they're they're now more successful than Arizona was this year. They're moving on to the Mm -hmm. second round of the playoffs and they look great. Well, Garoppolo is, I mean, he'll be one of those guys that does he get traded to Denver? Does he get traded to, uh, Oh, for sure. For to Carolina somehow. I, they have a lot of money things that they have to figure out. But yeah, it's, it, it is pure chaos to be this successful and have that much invested into your quarterback, your backup quarterback, who if he doesn't play next year, I mean, now now you have th- what three years left off of, uh, and that's including the the, the fifth year option. You have a ton of money, it's- and you have no draft picks. And none of that is based on the field. That's the thing that's so difficult in the NFL. None of what you said is actually who's the better player to play. It's all how pot committed are you? Yeah. You know, where did you draft him? And that makes the NFL difficult. You know, (laughs) you put the wrong guy out there because of money? I don't know. (sighs) Yeah, you shouldn't. Bengals, Titans, this weekend in Tennessee. Um, Cincinnati's got a heck of a shot to get to that. Uh, title game uh bills at chiefs good golly that's yeah. gonna be fun yes uh, bills look great that is the sunday night game i believe uh yes and then the saturday night game 49ers at packers i think that'll be a great game as well and the rams at tampa bay um excited for this weekend cardinals can't lose this weekend yes yeah they can no no longer hurt us no <laughs> no we should get into the truth here uh, before we do that, though, I want to thank today's sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Look, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but look, that's just its not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Uh, we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of, norm- of normal life, but that is just completely false as well. You take care of your body. You go to the gym. You go to the doctor. You hit the nutrition. Start focusing on your on your mind as uh, as well. I, I have uh, been a huge proponent of talk therapy. I think it is it is truly a powerful weapon to to help you get out of those really tough times and better help. They are situated for the future and th- like they are the future of talk therapy. Better help is customized online therapy. That offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to uh, see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try. See why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and fantasy footballers listeners can get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash footballers. And we want to thank Noom Weight. If you are, you know, look, it's a new year. You set goals. You're wanting to lose weight. That's such a common thing. The problem is a lot of times the the way that we go about trying to lose weight, it, it doesn't work. Noom Weight has a psychology based approach to help you view it differently. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's still goal oriented, but they have a psychology approach that is based on scientifically proven principles like cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps you better understand your relationship with food, why we eat the way we do. You know, it's not restricting you saying what you can eat, what you can't eat. It's not a diet like that. Noom is going to give you the knowledge and the wisdom that you need to make informed choices that not only fit your lifestyle, but also help you reach those goals. We have had listeners right in talking about how Noom Weight really did change their life. More than 75% of users complete their program. More than 60% of users lose 5% or more body weight by week 16. More than 60% of users engaged with the program keep the weight off for a year or more. It's a very well documented, proven program. So if you want to sign up for your trial and get a psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goals, Go to Noom.com slash footballers. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash footballers to sign up for your trial. 
Do you want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, here we are. The truth about the top 10 quarterbacks from 2021. There is uh, some additional quarterback info on the website. Kyle put out an article, 25 quarterback statistics from 2021. You can check that out. This year, we got a new record. 49 different quarterbacks. 49 different quarterbacks who registered a top 12 performance this year. If you took the entire league of 32 teams and then you took half of that league again yeah. and you added them together, you would still not hit 49. The Ravens, Saints, and Jets had three different quarterbacks each register multiple top 12 weeks. That's the first time that has ever been accomplished. Impressive. Injuries abounded this year. COVID, uh, you know, benchings uh, happened, and so a lot of backups. What, what is that? COVID? COVID benchings. I, oh, co yeah. I haven't heard oh, of you, that. No, COVID. is It's this new thing. Uh -huh. uh, it's pretty cool. It's very, very contagious. Okay. All right. League-wide, we saw a dip in completion percentage and the highest interception rate since 2018, obviously. Different quarterbacks. Not all the, not all the same. Well, and remember how outrageous last year's scoring was. How, how do we feel, before we really okay. dig in the truth, how do we feel about the quarterback position as a whole this year? What, do you guys think it was up, down, bad, good? Well, like just generic feeling when you look at quarterback play this year. I... I guess they didn't feel as top heavy, right? Sure. Yeah, it, it felt like the the players that you knew were going to be good or you projected to be good, they were good. Uh, and turns out that playing on the road, where there's eighty thousand people screaming at you, much more difficult than no one there playing in a, a completely empty stadium. When I look at this season, maybe it's because of last year's crazy, uh, you know, uh, scoring for the quarterback position. I felt like it was a, a a pretty down year. You had injuries to some of the main guys, Lamar Jackson, and uh, even Kyler missed a, a handful of games. You know, Mahomes started slow, and so I went this morning and I looked at the last decade. I took a look at the total scoring, who the top guy was, what the average of the top 12, top 24, what the total quarterback scoring was. And I was really surprised to see that this year we just finished was the second highest average of the top 12 quarterback scoring uh, only to last year, was the second highest top 24 average, was the second highest total for the quarterback position. So this was a really up year for fantasy scoring that's the truth and that's what we're getting after today is not like how did it feel but what was the actual truth and the truth was a lot of scoring this year for for quarterbacks I think in the last few years we've had a definitive singular quarterback or two that have had the headlines from day one of the year we had MVP candidates that spanned uh Kyler Dak Brady Allen Lamar uh Rodgers so, it, it, you know, if you ask the average person right now who finished number one at the position, I'm not sure everybody knows off right. the top of their head they way, the, the way they did in previous years. And the answer is Josh Allen. And it's the first time all decade that it has been the same person in back-to-back -back years. Josh Allen last year, Josh Allen this year. Oh, Thank you, excellent. Brooks. Thank you. He is excellent. The, the stallion. stallion. Josh Allen ended up uh, number one overall total scoring, but number three – in terms of consistency. So that's why I didn't quite feel that way. Um, you had some lulls. You had some off games. You had weeks where, especially at the very beginning of the year, you were like, okay, we're seeing what we've seen before, which is you come off an MVP caliber season where you dominate every week and you blow away every metric that is kind of disproportional to average, and then all of a sudden you come back to earth. But you got a lot of what you wanted from Josh Allen. Number one overall finishes five times. Yeah, that's 30% of his games. 30% of his games, he was not a quarterback. What He was the best quarterback on the week. And, um, yeah, he wasn't the most consistent, had a handful of games outside of the top 12. But I would say he was – You were happy. Uh, yeah, you were, you were definitely happy because he would go out there and win you some weeks. And even when he had down games, you know, he wasn't usually having what – Behind the scenes, we refer to as as a uh, mega bust. Yeah, um, he didn't crush you. We do in in we, the in the truth. We do now. Wait, we have bust and mega bust. Yes, in the truth docs, the the algorithm that we score these players with, <laughs> uh, we do have a mega. It bust. says mega bust. Yeah, 
Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds like thanks, powerful. Thanks for the invitation. Is that like Super Shredder? <laughs> but Brooks was surprised about that this year. He saw it and was like, ooh, what is this? But it's usually just in a hidden column, and so, I unhid the column. Okay, so so you, it's been Megabus forever. So yeah. you proclaimed that around the scenes, we all refer to it as a Megabus, but in fact, it is just you. In a <laughs> hidden in a <laughs> hidden column. We in a as, hidden column. That no one has ever seen. We as a brand. <laughs> The fantasy footballers. I mean, it's always been built, It's always been built into the truth series, uh, and uh, yeah. So we, <laughs> well, the universal, for sharing we. it with the people. Yeah. Well, uh, what I should say this at the beginning of these these episodes, the way we look at consistency is we do break players down in an algorithm, percentage of great games, percentage of good games, percentage of bus games. Uh, for quarterbacks, that means great games are over twenty six points. Good games are 21. Bust games are fewer than 15. Allen has that magic quality where he starts the game, maybe the first half, and he's a bust. Yeah. And then by the end of the game, no matter what the game script seems to be, he finds himself into that top 7-8 at the position, which saves your week and then sometimes wins it. Uh, he can come all the way back to number one. Uh, and this was always only six rushing touchdowns, which was the lowest of his career. So he still got it done. This was with Diggs having a, a year that wasn't the same as last year. He played great on the road, four more fantasy points on the road than at home. He played great against bottom 16 defenses, scored a couple points more per game against them. Stayed healthy, which is obviously important for finishing as the quarterback one. Is he your quarterback one for next year? Yes. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think it probably But is. that doesn't he, mean it, he'll be on my team. Because yeah, he's yeah. drafted too high. Because these other guys that we're going to talk about today, if they're two rounds lower, I'm totally comfortable with them. It was yeah, the lowest rushing touchdowns, but the highest rushing yardage. Did someone say that? Nope. Yeah. You so did. 763 rushing yards, man. We've been <laughs> known around here to have said that. <laughs> what? He's just saying that because you said something, we can say that we say that around oh, here. Oh, yes. yeah. I'm yes. just saying we're known, ah. we're known for that phrase you just said. I and, and and around the studio, sev, when a quarterback has sev, seven hundred sixty yards, I refer to that as mega great. Oh, I thought I was so hoping you go mega stallion because <laughs> that was the joke. The joke was mega stallion, and when you said mega, but I no, thought you were going to hit. That's, that's the rapper. That's the mega stallion. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I like Thank you, Jason. Oh, I, I'm there. One. I'm there. I just <laughs> mega stallion. We're not there. I mean, no. this show is off season. Yeah, we mode. are. We're not really cool enough to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> if if Justin Herbert goes two rounds later than Josh Allen, he's my quarterback next year because he ended up number two for the Chargers, and he was number two in consistency. If you look at him from week uh, 11 on, my goodness, yes, top 12 every single week. Percentage of great games lower than Josh Allen, 29%. Good games higher, uh, 53% because not as many great. And then uh, 29% of the time he busted. Uh, he played even better against good defenses. He was up to the challenge and had the weapons to do it. 29 points a game against top 16 defenses, exactly the same scoring at home or on the road. And how fun is it to watch J Justin Herbert? 5,000 passing yards, 38 touchdowns. Ridiculous. He has more ceiling. He really, really does. He has more ceiling. He can run more. 100%. I and mean, he can there, throw more touchdowns. I was going to say there's there's only a few guys in the league with this new you know, league that we're in, the, the passing league. Um, that 45 touchdown mark that used to be this impossible once in a decade type of performance, I think like I would be surprised if Justin Herbert retires without hitting that number. Um, the fact that he's got a head coach that's go for it at all times. I love that. It's so great for fantasy. Say whatever you want. You don't like uh, Brandon Staley. You think he's dumb for going on fourth all the time. <laughs> who cares? This is fantasy football. Go for it every single time. As someone who had Justin Herbert in our main league and <clears throat> went to a title game with him, having a coach like that was a, it was so fun. Because you ne you don't the biggest thing for fantasy is you don't want to lose the drive. Oh, they yeah. got a punt. They never punt. Uh, and he completed so many fourth down passes. He is one of a handful that have thrown for 5,000 yards before turning 24. Mahomes, Marino, Stafford, Herbert. That's it. And the offensive line, it's improved. The coach is stable. I think they bring back Mike Williams. I really do. I think Mike Williams had enough inconsistency this year to be at the right price for them to bring him back. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that that is a huge deal as they well. Have tons even, of cap space. E- even though they have, you know, Joshua Palmer looks like maybe he could step up next year, and they've got other weapons there. I do think that Mike Williams is crucial to Herbert being this tier, this you know, quarterback the the quarterback one, the quarterback two next year. If Mike Williams isn't there, I think that probably doesn't happen. Dynasty wise, dynasty wise, Herbert. It, I would take Mahomes ahead of Herbert. Allen ahead of him. I would take Josh Allen ahead of him, and then I think that would it's be Herbert. where Herbert would slot in. Mike, that's where I have him too. Yeah, I mean, the, I think we were just talking about. We like, were talking about Burrow, Herbert, or Burrow, which player do you like and i man herbert seems much safer than than burrow but if they actually do a full season of unleashing joe burrow he will he will break every record out there because of his arm talent and his the surrounding wide receivers joe burrow is 25 justin herbert only 23 still such a baby boy yeah yeah, I think uh, I think he's got a bright, bright future for dynasty players. Uh, Tom Brady is number three. He was the number one most consistent quarterback of the year. It got worse in the second half, but you had reasons why as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you lost Antonio Brown. You lost Chris Godwin. You dealt with uh, injuries at running back. And so this was a banner year for a 44-year-old Tom Brady who threw for 5,300 yards, 43 touchdowns, 12 picks. Brady was the best pick at quarterback this this year. He was super late. You didn't have to draft him high. You could get him in the double-digit rounds oftentimes, and he was outstanding. Very few people that drafted Tom Brady did not make the playoffs because you had a late-round quarterback that was – once you got to the playoffs, he was right there at quarterback one. The problem was you hit the playoffs in weeks – 15, 16, and 17, and weeks 15 and 16 yeah. were pretty much his worst weeks. So he got you to the playoffs, but then he let you down. Um, you yeah. probably didn't win a championship with him, but overall, you have to you have to remove that like personal, you know, vendetta against the the collapse in the playoffs, and just realize he was he was a machine this year. And he would have been better with his weapons in those games. And hot Thomas Brady stat here. Uh, Hot Tom, <laughs> yeah. We as as he is known around the office. Hot yeah. Tom. Hot Tom. Uh, <laughs> second most rushing yards of his career. <laughs> no, at age forty four, <laughs> is that real? Yes, he had a hundred rushing yards uh, on the season back in two thousand eleven, and he had eighty one this year. Wow, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here's another this hot guy. stat. Uh, here's hot an, Tom. Here's I think another. Papa Josh just turned Tom Brady's age today. Did he? Yeah. For real. So, I mean, uh, Tom should be a source of inspiration for every human, old, older man for, in the world. For every human. I mean, he is, he is a source of inspiration for um, not aging. Um, here's another cool Tom Brady stat from the NFL on CBS Twitter account. Um, career postseason wins versus NFC teams. Tom Brady, 10 Aaron Rodgers, 10. Year spent starting in the NFC. Oh, my gosh. Tom Brady, 2. Aaron Rodgers, 14. Yeah, That's I mean, so funny. Patrick Mahomes is number four. A lot of discussion here. Sure. Seventh inconsistency. Huge lull in the middle of the year where he wrecked you. Really, mm-hmm. he really did. He ended up 4,800 yards, 37 touchdowns, 13 picks. He was... Uh, not great at home, so you had a lot of these matchups at home that looked juicy. The Giants at home, uh, Green Bay, we'll get a shootout at home, Buffalo at home, uh, Denver at home, and then he'd lay an egg. They, you know, they they had inconsistency at the uh, at the running back position, which I think really hurt this offense. But will any of this season's kind of malaise around Patrick Mahomes impact draft capital next year? Because is he going to be the number two guy off the board behind? In Allen. I think he probably still will be. Um, the fact that he started strong and finished strong, and, and you're going to see him in the playoffs where I imagine he performs well, um, the history of having done it, I, I, you know, you have to rely on Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, Tyree Kill, and Travis Kelsey. I, 
I think you're going to I don't I don't think he's going to fall in drafts because of that lull. But that lull was real. That that 8 week stretch from which is yes. half the season from week 5 to 12, he was during that time not a top 12 quarterback for fantasy. Um QB 18 from week 7 through 12. Wow. Yeah, I mean it, it's it, it was it was a rough stretch. Now that's what I anticipate happening average draft position wise. I I anticipate that he will be the second quarterback taken. But should he be? Do do you think he will be the second best quarterback next year? I I question that. I don't think about it in terms of will he be the will he finish at number 2. I think about it when I draft quarterbacks in terms of what are the best odds that I have that he he will compete for that spot and he still has the history to say yes. He has enough history for me to say you know He's going to compete for the number one spot every year for the next 15 years. He's exactly like Aaron Rodgers has been in fantasy. Some years he's, you know, at the tippy top. Some years he's at three, four. That's how I'm viewing Mahomes in that lens. So it's going to come down to draft cost. So I think he'll probably be overdrafted from where I want to take him. Yeah, the the question, like, Travis Kelsey next year will – well, he still have enough to be an elite top tier, you know, the competing for the number one overall tight end. You have the inconsistencies of of Tyree Kill, which it seemed like uh, his his battle with COVID really affected some things. Uh, and he had you know some injuries throughout the the season here or there. Can we get Mahomes another weapon like? I think that the team is at a place where McCole Hardman, they're just kind of accepting that McCole Hardman was probably a wasted pick in the second round. The situation was very different when they went out and they uh, spent a high high draft pick on him. We, you weren't sure if Tyreek Hill was going to be back with the team or not. And we need some speed because speed helps this offense run. But, but like, is Pringle, you had a huge monster game for uh, for Pringle in the playoffs here. Who is going to be that number two wide receiver if if like if to pick up the slack for Travis Kelsey as he he starts to come down or do you guys still have Kelsey locked and loaded uh, up in that top tier of the number one tight end? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Kelsey's locked and loaded. He's going to be uh, you know him and Andrews will be back to back next year um, as first round late first early second round picks I will say that I'm scared about Kelsey the the age is a real thing at you know I was I was trying to see how he compares to other greats when who played a long time the the uh, Jason Witten's and Greg Olson's and uh Tony Gonzalez uh, who I think was probably the best comp and I was like man ain't nobody done what he's doing at this age and it's not going to keep going on forever they will need to replace Kelsey's offensive. offensive output soon. Noah Gray, you maybe, ready? You ready, maybe. Noah? Uh, Matthew Stafford at number five. Consistency rank of number nine. And uh, really up and down season. I didn't, I didn't ever really feel like I feel confident week to week with Matthew Stafford and, and now seeing the truth, seeing the consistency, seeing that there were only 13% of great games I mean, that's not a high percentage for somebody that you want to lock into your lineup. Um, I understand why I felt that way, seeing these numbers. You know, when you're when you're near the bottom of QB1 in consistency, that's going to be tough. He, he's, he feels like a quarterback that fantasy managers were, like, resigned to start. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I would say that if you drafted Stafford, you were disappointed. Um, the first five weeks of the season, which is really what matters, you know, when you draft the player – uh, you know, only had two good games, three bad games, and you just felt like this wasn't uh, the Stafford you hoped, the nuclear, you know, put him with McVay and have him throw for 40 touchdowns. I was surprised that he finished as the quarterback five. It just didn't feel that way. But again, like you said, the inconsistency through the season, um, you know, the the lack of big games, uh, that was felt. And so that's why, you know, the, the second half of the year he was – quarterback 11 in our consistency score which is near the bottom of the most relevant 
you know, fantasy quarterback. That's so strange because he, he threw for almost 4,900 yards and 41 touchdowns. I know. And I get it. He had an extra game where – Higher interceptions, obviously. Where yeah. in week 18 he threw three touchdowns and 240 yards. But take that away, he's still a, a 4,500-yard, 38 touchdown, you know, of the numbers that we're used to of, of the 16 games, which is ex- – that's incredibly strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess just the – those off when he had an off week, it was pretty detrimental to you. And where because he doesn't run, you don't have if if the passing game isn't locked in, if the the rushing game for the Rams takes over that particular week, your your baseline, your floor is pretty low. Yeah, that's right. And you know, there's a bright future to to look at potentially in in Los Angeles with the. You know, you get Cam Akers back, and you know it is Beckham back on that roster, and Robert Woods back, right? So, do you, do, you dra- do you draft him next year? Do you go after him, or are you scared off with his inconsistency this year, his interceptions? He's always going to be a a target, I think, because of the nature of like you. You get to a certain point in your career, and you don't get drafted above a certain spot. Yeah, he'll be late. So he almost seems like, you know, like dr- Super Kirk. If we're or Mega Kirk, if we wanna, if that's our <laughs> that's new that's how we talk about it around here. Um, <laughs> where you just have all this peripheral, and they, I I think they they have a great chance to go further in these playoffs and put it on display. So, um, yeah, I mean he may be a target if he's an eighth, ninth, tenth round guy next year. Like who you're drafting all of the other upside young names. Burrow will go ahead of Matthew Stafford. Yes, yes. I he mean will, for sure. Lamar will go ahead of him. Yes, Kyler will, will go ahead of him. Uh, all the guys we've named already on the show will go ahead of him. So he's just a really safe late pick. He's he's a pick that I think you combine with a dart throw elsewhere, and then you can lock him in if your dart throw doesn't work out. Aaron Rodgers at six, consistency ranking number five, most consistent quarterback over the back half of the year. Twenty seven percent great games, fifty three percent good. Lots of questions about you know is he is he back? You know is he retiring? There there's going to be that rumor mill all off season, And you know, and again, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, but this Aaron likes the attention. So I'm guessing we're not going to have uh, information right up front with this guy. I was going to say the off season is going to be dominated by Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers talk. And Rodgers is going to just mm, delicious. Talk about me some more, please. What was that again? Yeah, that was a direct. We put the played the sound clip from I, Aaron right there. Yeah, I called that the Mega Hannibal. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, I, I think you just have to wait to kind of discuss drafting him next year. Yeah, but the truth is, he's a great well, quarterback and played great again. And Devontae Adams should be back, and it's trying to persuade Aaron to come I'm, back. I mean, either way, like next year, I think Aaron Rodgers is is safe for fantasy football because he, he's either back with the Green Bay Packers because uh, he's still technically under contract. They've just maneuvered it in certain uh, a certain way that they could trade him if Rodgers is going to force it. Devontae Adams needs a new contract, but if if Rodgers is back, they will franchise Devontae Adams. It, like So he'll still be solid there. Or if he forces the Packers to make the move, He's going somewhere where he can win. He's not going to a rebuild. He's going to a place that has uh, at least one true alpha wide receiver, if not more. So I think he, I think Rodgers is safe. Like if you're talking dynasty, I still think that Rodgers will be a uh, an easy quarterback one next year with upside. Just for science, <laughs> I would love to see the Packers trade him to the Jaguars. Like. <laughs> I just want to see right. what he could do. You know, it's like if you've got this just horrific team, this terrible franchise, but you put someone like Aaron Rodgers, do, do they become they be- playoff contenders yes. just overnight? Yes. That's crazy. I yeah, we, we kind of did the science a little bit with Tampa. Oh, I guess I guess that's fair. And we, you know, we kind of did the science with Denver as well, with Peyton. Mm-hmm. So I think the science would work out well for Jacksonville. Now that would be hilarious to put Goldilocks on the bench too. Oh no! The trade would be for yes. Trevor Lawrence, of course, oh, okay. All right. to put to, to put uh, love on the bench. Uh, Dak was number seven. Consistency of eight. Really difficult year to evaluate Dak. I yes. think 
And I think it's going to be really difficult going into the future. They're going to lose Kellen Moore, um, I believe. And if they do, I don't. I just don't know how to think about this offense. Mike McCarthy, he's going to be back. There was inconsistency. You didn't get to see everything you wanted from CeeDee Lamb in terms of game-breaking. You had an injured Zeke, and presumably, I mean, that should have been in the news. I mean, it, he confirmed yeah, yeah, yeah. He confirmed a torn PCL. And so, much better player before the injury. Do, but, do you prefer your players breaking the news at the end of the season where like you the entire year you're like what is going on with this player and they they assure you the whole time no they're I feel great it's fabulous and then you get to the end of the season like well actually I've been playing through a torn PCL and you're well, like, like Robinson Allen Robinson yeah. didn't he tweet from like a hospital room or something after a season he's like just kidding I'm hurt and so would you do you prefer, prefer that or should the player just say, yeah, I've got this injury and I'm going to play through it? Well, I certainly would prefer that. Uh, I think they're afraid of announcing injuries for to the other, team. other teams targeting them. But, yeah, I can't stand when the season's over and they're like, okay, yeah, let's check this out. This is what, I, this is what was really going on, everybody. <laughs> check out this peg leg. It's just so, I was playing on. so bizarre, this. You go the whole season. For, I am perfectly fine. I am very healthy. Your season ends. Oh no! But it was a. Yeah, just, I have a ligament that. Just say nothing. Yeah. You know, don't, well, you don't. can't. You can't say nothing because we have all these ridiculous. Like our access to players is is way too high. Like the the questions that these players are asked over and over and over. I don't care. It's just it's it's. But nonsense. then you got Arian Foster who actually like publishes MRI results, what? which is a little too far. Uh, <laughs> Dak was thirty eight percent of the time a great quarterback. So even though he's only number one overall in the week finish was a week 18 that didn't matter for anybody, you did have a number three, a number two, a number three, a number two. He he had a high percentage of 26-plus point games compared to some of these other quarterbacks. I mean, more than Aaron Rodgers, percentage-wise, more than Stafford, yeah, and I more think, than Mahomes. I think you're right that he's very confusing going forward because you, you wonder the Dallas offense, like are they, are they really – a high-powered offense or not, and I think one of the things that got in Dak's way this year is the fact that Dallas led the NFL in points per game, 31.2, including seven games of 35 points or more, and that sounds fantastic, except part of the reason that they scored so much is that their defense scored right. a bunch this year, and that's not really sticky. That's not something that year to year, you know, if your defense scores a bunch of touchdowns that you can bank on they're going to do again next year. But when a defense scores a touchdown, it is bad for the quarterback. Like, for fantasy purposes, your defense scores, now you're up, you higher chance of winning the game, being in the fourth quarter, trying to run the clock out, not really needing to play catch up. And so maybe there is room for him to go north next year with Zeke being older and maybe more. Uh, Do you worry about losing the offensive coordinator? Not really. I, I, uh, you know, Kellen Moore's one of those guys where it's like, it is funny how many complaints happen about Dallas's offense, but they're all directed at McCarthy, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I people, don't feel like people are complaining about Kellen Moore. They're only building him up. I don't think people are complaining about the Dallas offense very often, are they? Uh, yeah. I mean, Dallas is just big enough where people complain no matter it what. It looked rough in the, in that playoff game, but. I, I would be a little bit concerned because of Mike McCarthy. He strikes me as a, a coach that if, if Kellen Moore leaves, I won't be shocked. Taking it Mike over Mike McCarthy, himself. I'm not even going to bring in an OC. I'm Mike McCarthy, uh, a Super Bowl winning coach, Mike McCarthy, so I'll handle this. Mega Mike. Yeah, me <laughs> As, as he's known around the fantasy footballer's <laughs> office in the hit column. Beat but. this horse right up. <laughs> This mega stallion just beat it dead. <laughs> um, Joe Burrow ends up number eight, which is, I think, kind of impressive. The end of the year, obviously. Oh, man. 11th inconsistency. He was. What is he? He was so, so much better against bad defenses. 28 fantasy points a game. That's against, a red flag. It is. Against bottom 16. Um, Joe Burrow would be a, a, a case study in a book about recency bias in my opinion i'm not taking anything away from him he was amazing against baltimore and kansas city he was also awful at different times during the year and so i think 
the truth of Joe Burrow is he is he's not I I would take oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I would take Dak over him. I mean, he's exciting. He's fun to have on your roster. He he fits the bill of um what Justin Herbert represented coming into the year with potential and like his season this year was a lot like Justin Herbert's last year where you had a lot of these peak games, you saw the arm talent, you know the weapons are there, but 19% good games, or I'm sorry, great games on the year, busted 25% of the time, he's going to be attached at the hip to Jamar Chase for a long time, and that's a very good thing. Yes. Yeah, when when you talk about that question of, okay, next year, would you draft Dak or would you draft Burrow? I think Dak might be the the safer option, might finish the year better, but I'm definitely drafting Burrow if those two guys are back to back, because I want the chance that one of these guys could go nuclear. And look, when Burrow came into the league, it was the best college film I had ever seen from a quarterback when he was his final year at LSU and won the national championship. And now do you have any retrospect of thinking about that tape now, knowing, I mean, I get, he's playing with Jamar chase, which, so I can't take that away, but he was playing with Jamar chase Justin Jefferson mm -hmm. and Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like <laughs> I held that against him a little bit, but what you saw at the end of this year, you know, he 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 had he, obviously he started great as a rookie. Devastating knee injury. Started slow this year, but I mean, it wasn't like he was those performances, yeah, maybe there were bad defenses, but uh, Kansas City's not a bad defense. Those performances were crazy. Uh Tom Brady has never had more than one game in a season of hitting 404 and Burrow did it in two games back to back. Brady's never done it? Never had more than one in a oh, season. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and so the ceiling, it's kind of like Mike said a, a, you know, a little bit ago, if they allow him to really be unleashed, I, I think he could be the quarterback one I mean, next year. Oh, really? I do. If, they, un if they unleash him. I, I disagree with both of the sentiments that you said earlier, like where you're like his, ceil like, his ceiling is what Herbert did this past year to me, which is like, 40 touchdowns and 5000 yards like unleashing I don't even I don't even know what that means quantifiably because he threw 520 passes this year he was the sixth most consistent quarterback over the back half that's where I'm slotting him in six sounds good to me yeah I mean the the difference when I say unleashing him when you look at how their their neutral game script you know pass to run ratio the whole beginning of the year they were the they were run heavy slow um, that's who they were, and then all of a sudden, the you know the change happened at the end of the year, and it's so far continued into the first game of the playoffs. So I'm just curious, you know, if if they become a pass first team with Chase and Higgins already, you know, locked in forever, he's just a very exciting prospect. Like, to me. He, had, he was he, he he was averaging the same amount of passing attempts in the first eight games than the last eight games, pretty much. I mean, your your pace for weeks one through uh, one through nine were like. 540 in a season, it kind of went up a little bit to like 560 in a season. He was just better. He was just a better quarterback. Well, that's better, better efficiency, more touchdowns. You know, you, you throw eight touchdowns in the last two games of the year. Suddenly you threw 34 <laughs> instead of yeah. 26. And it's like, I don't think he doesn't have a bright future. I just don't think it's like, I'm not willing to take two games at the end of the year and just give him the number one spot that some people want to do. I, I'm yeah. not speaking to no, you. No, no, I'm no. just I, saying like social media. No, I, I, I can see that. But it is important to remember like this. You, you just talked about it, like maybe the biggest difference was he just got better. Because oh, yeah. this was his sophomore season and he lost part of his rookie season. He, this is still, you know, a young quarterback. Uh, so going into his next year, I think, you know, you'd expect it to be better than this one. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he plays, he plays just pits. natural progression of a uh, career. Usually, your your third year as a quarterback should be better than your second. I would say that that's not statistically necessarily. He may be a better quarterback, but for fantasy, that doesn't. You know what I mean? He could be a better NFL quarterback, and that doesn't mean he's a better fantasy quarterback. That could, but I, those usually correlate. They don't have to. And Jamar's second year. Yeah, I mean, he he still has to play Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Cleveland twice in that division every year, and um. You know, we put up nine points against Las Vegas, 12 against Denver. I just think there needs to be some balance with Joe Burrow going into the draft. That's all. Sure. Um, his red fire hot mega games, as we call them, mm -hmm. uh, will be better than almost everybody's because he's playing with those kind of weapons. 
So you you got – he seems to be a really rhythm quarterback where the game gets going and you get nuclear performances from him. It's funny, though, because those last two games of the year, he had only had one finish inside the top like six, seven, eight. Yeah, his his previous high was – eight other than the Baltimore game for the whole year. So you saw the ceiling. It's great. It's going to be fun. And if you have yep. him in Dynasty, you should be yeah, really excited. He is fascinating. Cause like, and I know it's our job to kind of project and prognosticate, but this is one that the end of next year you could say, well, yeah, you you, easy, you should have seen this coming. Didn't you see those last two games of, of 2021? Or – He's average again. What he was for most of this year. And you're like, yeah, it was just two games. We shouldn't have freaked out. This He is, as of right now, he is by far the most difficult quarterback to project. His pace before the two blow-up games was 4,431. That's a fine With a 6% season. touchdown percentage. Yes. Yeah, he did. He, he was overperforming the league average by a lot. Yeah. His uh, touchdown percentage, I believe, probably went up over those those two games. Um, he'll be hotly debated, obviously. I think mm -hmm. we just learned that just now. Uh, nine is Jalen Hurts, 10 is Kyler Murray. Woof. And, and these two players were actually higher on the consistency side. We do not, on the consistency side, factor in missed games because you would not have started them. So Kyler feels much... Fourth in consistency. Worse, right. He, he, fourth in consistency is great. Um, if you had him, you didn't feel that because he missed the chunk in the middle of the year and then once he came back without Hopkins was not what he was to start the season he was in points per game he was fourth which yeah. is what matters when you miss what three games in the middle of the year yeah and and you know as someone who had him and you know we we won a championship with him it still felt like, I didn't remember how good he was at the beginning of the year when he was playing with Hopkins, those first seven games, mm -hmm. on pace for 4,800 passing yards, 41 touchdowns, another 300 rushing yards. Like, he was on pace for a walkaway quarterback one performance. Uh, and then he really floundered the rest of the season. In the world of uh, – we just talked about Joe Burrow at the end of the year. The way that Kyler went out on national television – with a bunch of poop in his pants. Does the reaction extend to ADP next year? Yeah, I think... Will there be a tremendous fear about Kyler? I mean, I, I think he will fall a little bit. Will Burrow go ahead of Kyler? I don't think Burrow will, but will will Lamar Jackson go ahead of Kyler Murray? I don't know. Because yeah. we're not going to see... Ky we don't see Lamar anymore either. Yeah. That, it's a good question. Herbert will go ahead of oh, Kyler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mahomes will go ahead of Kyler. Josh Allen will go ahead of Kyler. Yes. And then there's a, a crapshoot of a couple of guys. Dak. Yep. Dak. Burrow, Rogers. Rogers. Kyler. And I would, you know, I mean, it, you they, the Arizona Cardinals have to do something about the wide receiver position because Kyler is not someone who has been able to lift his Correct. Uh, teammates up. Um, so if they were to go out and trade for Calvin Ridley, I would be all in on Kyler again next year. But, uh, you know, Hopkins obviously showed his age this season. And without Hopkins, Kyler was not a great fantasy quarterback. You're saying with the injury? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all AJ Green's fault anyway. <laughs> I can get behind that. Um, Kyler was better against bad teams. He was better on the road, as were the Cardinals. He was the quarterback four in the hot 7-0 start. He was good at the deep ball, effective throwing it downfield. Uh, tied Tom Brady for the most 20-plus yard completions. You like big plays. Man, he just – would last night's game have been different with that one scramble where he had Christian Kirk deep and just missed him? You, you remember that play yeah, right yeah, in the yeah. beginning? Yeah, I mean, a lot of plays would have would have would have turned that game for, but and Kyler's interesting. I think Jalen Hurts is more interesting because number one, you don't even you don't know if he's going to be the quarterback of the future for the Philadelphia Eagles. But a reminder, which I think is still worth giving, is that was essentially Jalen Hurts' rookie year, and you're 
it doesn't feel like it because he started a handful of games, you know, last year when he was actually a rookie in the NFL. But like these we we've, we've seen these second year quarterbacks really get better. Burrow was much better as a as a second year player. Uh Justin Herbert was immensely better as a second year player. So you have to leave a little bit of room here that Jalen Hurts could be their guy. They I believe that uh, Sirianna was the only rookie head coach to actually get into the playoffs. If Hertz is the guy, I think that his ADP is going to be behind all, basically all these players we've been talking about, even though up till week 11 in the season, he was like the quarterback two, quarterback one. Hertz is, as a starter, uh, incredibly consistent. And I think we know if he starts games, he will be. But he doesn't offer the same ceiling of a lot of other quarterbacks. Well, he he definitely didn't and like never finished in the top 2 on a given week, but just was super steady. Yes. I mean he yeah, he wasn't actually in the 2, but like week 11, quarterback 3 with over 30 points. I mean, that's 30 points from from your quarterback. That's that's a fantastic Oh, week. I I'm not taking and, anything away. I just think philosophically some people want to shoot for one two finishes with certain players. Joe Burrow right. showed he could do that. And then some people are like totally fine with like Jalen Hurts got to that finish because he was just like 6, 10, 10, 4, 7, 5, 6, 12. Right. He just didn't – that's what he is as a starter. He's not going to win let you, you down. He's not going to win you weeks. He's not going to let you down. If you want to build your roster around other players and grab him late and just have a consistent quarterback option, that's good. But, yeah, he's not, he's not going to put up 30-point games as often as other – Right, but I'm saying leave margin for – Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts could get better. Like, remember Lamar Jackson's rookie season? It was they won. Like they 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 got in the playoffs, and Lamar helped carry them to there. But he was Lamar's rookie season is nothing like Lamar has been since then, where everything got much much better, much more. Uh, everything improved for Lamar Jackson. So. It can also be worse. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, and I'm definitely See not saying Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying every that, offseason that Jalen Hurts is going to all of a sudden turn into a an, a a replica of Lamar Jackson. But you should leave a little bit of that, a uh, little a little room for that thought that heading in next year, if Hurts is the guy, they don't they don't spend any of those first round picks on a quarterback. They just they load up, making the team better. Maybe they get another wide receiver because they. Rager is <laughs> Rager's not the guy. Uh, it, Devontae Smith's a good player. Can he really be a number one? That that uh, TBD. But if you put another weapon on this team, Hurts becomes extremely interesting to me. Yeah, I I will. He will be a commonly drafted quarterback for me next year because I I do think he'll be later than most of these yes. guys we've talked about. And you believe that the team will commit to him? Well, I know that I will know whether they committed to him <laughs> by the time draft rolls around. I with three first round picks and how bad he was in the playoff game, I they would they would be negligent if they weren't looking at what their options are. Could they go and get Watson? You know, they were in the the rumor mill through the season. Uh, they have the capital that might be able to get that done. And you know, if I was an, the Eagles general manager, I'd be seeing what other options I have if it's better than Hurts, but if would I had to guess right now, I think they will stick with Hurts. Would you rather have Tua or Hurts in a dynasty league? Hurts. Hurts. Okay. All right. Um, quarterbacks part two. It's very risky to say that, but yes. Yeah, my head was saying like the ceiling's so much better for Hurts, but it seems like if the if Miami committed, then you'd have a longer asset that might be more, you, mediocre, you would, more but, mediocre. But do you have Derek Carr? Right, but I'd rather have Derek Carr than would you a backup. Well, sure, but would you? That's where the risk is. is would yeah. not. Would you, you know. rather have? Would you rather trade for a player knowing you get two years of a really dominant fantasy option, or would you rather trade for a player knowing you get five years of a guy that you? Oh, I'd rather have the dominance. Right. Even if you gave me one year. Right. Genuinely, I'd take one year of Jalen Hurts if you promised me he finishes top five versus five years of number fifteen. Tua. Exactly. That's that's why I yeah. think we answer that way. All right. Uh, quarterbacks part two on the Thursday episode and uh, any other news or mega news we want to talk about on that show. We'll stop talking now. Thank you for tuning in and listening. We're around all 
off season. Make sure you subscribe. You can watch it on YouTube. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.